Welcome to the eKnowledge SAT ACT Power Prep, the what and the how. There are probably lots of ways to describe or talk about the SAT and the ACT, but we are going to explain it based on what the test makers test and how they test it, and also what is in the Power Prep and how to use the Power Prep. Keep in mind that this is just an overview. You need to watch all of the other how-to videos. You can link to those videos at any time from here on the main landing page or from directly inside the virtual classroom in the how to use the program section. Second, you should download all of the officially released exams and familiarize yourself with them. You will use them constantly during your preparations. So what is on the exam? Both the SAT and the ACT test basic content you should have learned in high school. They divide it between verbal and math and then subdivide it even further within those two main categories. Now let's begin looking specifically at the ACT exam. Within verbal, they test reading, standard grammar, logical reasoning, and vocabulary. But reading, logic, and vocabulary skills are tested in various ways throughout the exam in varying degrees in every section. Within math, they test the basic concepts you should have learned in high school, including arithmetic, algebra, geometry, and trigonometry. Within math, they also directly test your reading skills and your ability to reason logically, and to a much lesser extent, vocabulary. Within the verbal portion of the exam fits this hybrid called science reasoning. The emphasis here is most decidedly on the reasoning part and not the science part. But the test makers are not evaluating your understanding of biology or physics. They are, however, directly testing your ability to read, understand, analyze, and manipulate data in all its various forms, like charts, graphs, diagrams, etc. Also, they want to know whether you can understand and evaluate the logical underpinnings of given hypotheses and experiments. But the good news is, you do not need any prior science knowledge to answer these questions. Now we're going to take a very high-level overview of the ACT. The ACT is a three and a half to four hour exam with four mandatory graded sections but the essay is optional and it will add about another 30 minutes to your exam. It is graded on a 36 point scale. There are 215 multiple choice questions. There is no penalty for guessing. So that means guessing is mandatory. Never leave a question without an answer. There are four subtests within the ACT and each of these subtests is scored on a 36 point scale. Then they average all four sections together to give you an overall ACT score that is of course based on the 36 point scale. So each subtest is weighted equally to the other subtests. Each one is worth a maximum of 36 points. So even though each subtest is worth 36 total possible points, since each subtest has a different number of questions, that means that the questions within each subtest end up being weighted differently. In other words, since there are more English grammar questions, 75, that means that the grammar questions are worth about one half of a scaled point each, compared to science reasoning and reading, where each question is worth about one scaled point. The four subtests appear in this order. First is English, which is really a grammar test. It's 45 minutes, 75 questions, and each of the 75 questions is worth approximately one half of a scaled point. Math, which is 60 minutes, has 60 questions, and each question then is worth approximately 0.6 of a scaled point. Then there's reading, 35 minutes, 40 questions, so each question is worth roughly one scaled point. And then science reasoning, 35 minutes, 40 questions, and also each question is worth approximately one scaled point. The essay is optional. It's one question, and you have 30 minutes to answer it. And it's scored on a scale from one to six, but it does not count towards the 36 point overall ACT grade. 
the English test is a grammar test with some logical analysis and heavy doses of vocabulary. It has the most questions of any sections, 75, and it is 45 minutes long. The questions are taken from five different passages and each passage has about 13 questions. This subtest is scored out of a 36 total possible points, so each question is worth approximately half of a scaled point. You will be tested on basic accepted grammar rules and what they call rhetorical skills. That's the logical reasoning part, and I'll show you an example of this in a minute. You will read passages that have underlined sections that indicate where a potential problem exists, and then you will select an answer choice that you think fixes the problem. But keep in mind, one of the answer choices is always no change. The good thing about this section is that it's based on learnable grammar rules. So like math, you can make big improvements if you study the rules. There are some pure logic questions that ask you whether to add or delete sentences based upon the logical flow of the material, and I'll show you some examples of that too. Let's look at an English subtest. Okay, so here's part one of an English test. It shows you have 45 minutes, 75 questions, and here is passage one. This one's called the triangular snowflake. And question one, they underline this section right here. So the whole sentence is, Snowflakes form from tiny water droplets, comma, following a specific process of chemical bonding as they freeze, comma, which results in a six-sided figure. All right, so the only part you have to worry about is this part right here. And your options are no change, and then they shift the commas around in different ways. Well, the answer to this one is the no change option. It's actually correct the way that it is. So that is testing your understanding of commas. The next one Question two says, the rare triangular snowflake, comma, similarly confounded scientists for years because it apparently defied the basic laws of chemistry. So now it's asking you what to do with this word similarly. So this is a logic-ish kind of question. So the rare triangular snowflake, however, is the correct transition, not similarly because it's telling you up here that most of the time these snowflakes freeze in a six-sided process, but obviously a triangle is only three sides, so that's an opposite effect. So the logic is that it would be however. And that's how these questions come together. Okay, like grammar, math is based on a known set of objective rules. So the more you study, the more you will learn and improve. Calculators are allowed on the exam. So you should Google what calculators are permitted on the ACT to make sure your calculator is allowed. The math subtest will test arithmetic or pre-algebra, elementary algebra, intermediate algebra, and then also coordinate and plane geometry and trigonometry. And you can see the percentages for each one. It's a 60 minute subtest with 60 questions and that means that each math question is worth approximately 0.6 of a scaled point up to 36. Okay, so now let's look at some actual math questions. Here you see that it is a 60 minute exam with 60 questions and then they start in with the first questions are usually the easiest ones. This will be your pre-algebra, arithmetic, and then as you go the questions will get harder and harder. Uh, make sure that you don't leave any question unanswered because there's no penalty for guessing. You can see that some of the questions are just straight math application. They give you graphs and give you more like a, a word problem. So it's a, it's a basic math exam that you've taken a hundred times in high school and it's going to test every part of your math experience all the way from arithmetic to trigonometry and the questions will get harder and harder as you go through the exam. Okay, now let's take a look at reading comp, also sometimes called evidence-based reading. The reading comp will test your reading, obviously, your vocabulary, and your logic. In other words, can you read 800 or so words in a passage and grasp the overall point, the subpoints, specific words and ideas, and also extend the logic of some of the content? It's a 35 minute exam. It has four passages and 40 questions, so each reading comp question is worth about one scaled point up to 36 total. 
Each passage has about 10 questions and you will get one passage each from social studies, natural sciences, prose fiction, and humanities. The good thing is you're not tested on any content outside of the passage. Everything you need to answer every question is contained inside of the actual passage. However, having a working knowledge of these areas will make it easier to comprehend the material and do so quicker. After all, this is a timed exam, so the faster you comprehend the information, the better. For example, you may get a passage about biology that talks about DNA. They will not ask you general information questions about DNA that you might have learned about in high school. They will only test you on the actual information contained inside of the passage. However, if you have a working knowledge of DNA, the words won't seem foreign and the concepts will come easier to you while you are reading. Also, note that the test makers purposefully select dense and difficult passages. They will also cut out large chunks of the original content so that the information will be harder to follow. They are purposefully attempting to make it difficult. So let's take a look at an actual reading comp passage. So here you see the directions. It's a 35 minute exam. It has 40 questions and this is passage one and it even tells you that this is a prose fiction type passage. And then you'll see it has 87 lines, about 850 words and about 10 questions and they will ask you the types of things that you're used to seeing on a reading comp type question. So this is a what's the primary purpose of the passage kind of question. And then they will also ask you to look at specific lines. Here's one where it says look at line 38. So it's the same kinds of questions that you have had on reading comp type questions forever. All right, so let's look at science reasoning. Science reasoning will test your logical reasoning skills, your reading, your vocabulary, and your data analysis. It's 40 minutes, 40 questions, and six passages, so each passage has about six or seven questions, and each question is worth about one scaled point to a total of 36. Each passage will contain charts, graphs, diagrams, and data of some sort or description, and then all of the passages will be related to science in some way. But this is not a test of your science knowledge. They are testing how well you can grasp data understand it, manipulate it, analyze it, and make conclusions about it. Just like reading comprehension, all of the information is presented to you. You don't need outside knowledge. The vocabulary will probably seem new and maybe confusing, but that's done on purpose. Don't give up just because you start reading and the terms are new and confusing. Of all of the subtests, this is the one that you can improve the most just by doing lots of examples and familiarizing yourself with the process. These are like puzzles and everything you need to solve them is included. The questions will fall into three categories. The data representation, where you read graphs and tables, diagrams, and raw data. Research summaries, where you analyze experiments and their process. In other words, can you understand the what, why, how, and make conclusions. Conflicting viewpoints, where they are seeing if you can evaluate hypotheses, see what is valid, what is logically invalid, and also understand which views are supported and not supported by the data or the evidence. Okay, here you can see the science test. It's 35 minutes and 40 questions. And you can see here's passage one and they give you some text with a lot of data and then they give you charts and then they're going to ask questions about all of that information. So you can see that the and there were seven questions here. Here's passage two. This one has a little bit more um, text, but here's hypothesis one, hypothesis two, and they're going to ask you about those and it has about seven questions and then passage three is back to a lot of data this is a graph and like i said it looks very confusing but once you dig into it i think you'll find that a lot of these are a lot easier than what they look like from the outside 